It has to be one of the best games I played in a long time. I almost forgot about this title prior to its release during its Kickstarter days until my friend brought it up about two to three, maybe four months ago. I watched the Murder on the Owl Express trailer that was released back in May of this year, and it honestly piqued my interest. Now, I am aware that we've had some letdowns and not super amazing products come out of Kickstarter, but I didn't let that clout my judgment on what I initially thought about this game, acknowledging that it was from Kickstarter as well. When a hit finally released, I was very ecstatic to see what I was in for, and damn, Gears for Breakfast cooked up a fire-ass game. Right off the bat, you're kicked off with the cutscene of Hat Kid sleeping in bed, getting ready for the Norman shit, and oh my god, she can throw hands. She checks on her fuel, which is the source of what her ship runs off of. They're really timepieces, but whatever. This man does some stupid shit, her fuel decreases, and you're thrown straight into the game, just like that. Welcome to Mafia Town. You're probably expecting me to explain what happens after this, but nah. A hit's levels are based off of chapters, and each of those chapters take place in different planets. Each act of every chapter takes place within the same world, but each of them have different objectives. You can access these new chapters by looking through each telescope within Hat Kid's spaceship, but in order to do that, you need to collect a certain amount of time pieces to progress. And trust me, all of these acts have their own identity, and each of the title cards you'll see once you select an act will definitely give you an idea as to what you're going to experience, or what you have to do. All of the characters in a hit are colorful, they stand out, and are memorable for that. My favorites besides Hat Kid being the Cooking Cat and the Snatcher. The voice acting is top notch in my opinion. Though I heard there are people that don't like the voice acting, and to that I say, Yikes! I feel as though it's appropriate and definitely solidifies the childlike atmosphere this game gives off, personally. In terms of gameplay, this had to have been one of the best platforming experiences I've ever had in a platformer in quite some time, especially for one that I'm not too familiar with. A hit's not afraid to embrace the inspiration that Mario 64 graced upon it, and I respect that. Also, for some reason, or particularly in the chapters when you have to be sneaky, they give me Sly Cooper and Luigi's Mansion vibes. I love it. Level designs complement the gameplay to a T and makes things feel useful. Everything is balanced and even though I haven't completed the game, just going back to it to mess around still fills me with joy because I know I can always replay these missions and never get tired of them. Hat Kid controls pretty darn good and as someone who has played this numerous times, I can confirm that my first playthrough of this game was experimental and all of the mess ups I had was because of me. Because honestly, I was a little overwhelmed with the package this game gave to me. A hit has a godly soundtrack, the levels are incredible inspired, the game has a ton of replay value, and the characters are lovable, even to the coldest person breathing on this earth. I'd say that this is definitely worth the 30 bucks on Steam, if your PC can run it that is. It will be coming to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One sometime soon, but there is no official release date, so you'll have to wait if your primary platform to play games is a home console. Gears for Breakfast made a great game, and I'm glad I didn't miss out on this adorable, unique, somewhat creepy and disturbing, and funny adventure. A Hat in Time is definitely a hit. Shout out to Cal for that acronym for A Hat in Time. Go check out his review of the game. It's worth a watch. I'll see you guys later. Y'all can thank Cal. Go support the boy. I'll catch y'all whenever, if ever. Peace.